Hey, it's Super Artistic Me, and today I'm going to show you, or y'all, how to make your own little homemade stickers that you can stick it on notebooks or your sketchbooks or whatever. But what I basically got the idea from is that I was watching someone else's manga drawings, and um, I noticed that one of her drawings was actually a little chibi cutout. And she literally had some, I guess, special sticker paper where you can literally draw on it and color your, um, draw, your drawings or design or whatever and create stickers with it. So I thought that was like, cool, that's interesting. Instead of going buying stickers and trying to decorate my own sketchbook, which I like to do from time to time, I can just create my own. So I do not have the... Um, special sticker paper but I do have watercoloring paper that is great for water based markers and basically what I did here is I already as you see I already drew out my character in chibi form I think she's adorable and I've already inked her I've used um, the Micron the Sakura Micron multi liners 03 um, size tip and then just for and then I have this ultra fine point sharpie which did quite well and basically I do like a very dark outline around the drawing to make it a quite a um, an impressive effect other materials that you need is a ruler so that way you won't waste a bunch of paper but instead you can just take your pencil and this ruler and shh, draw a line and shh, draw a line there and then you have some you know, you don't waste paper and stuff. Or you can use it for your drawings to draw guidelines. And I have a big eraser to erase the pencil marks right after my inking. Scissors. Tape. Gotta need some tape or you can use glue. But I don't like using glue because it may mess up my um, chibi. And markers. Lots of colored markers. And so, like I said, we already got through with the drawing part, or I've already drawn, drew, did the drawing part, but then I'm going to do coloring, my favorite part. So I guess for the hair, I'm going to use maybe um, three colors, or four, depending. But it's going to be just these different hues of browns. And I guess I'll start with this tan or a light brown. And if the camera view seems to be out of place, I'm sorry. It's hard to draw and hold a camera at a at the same time. I do have a camera stand, but it, it's really uncomfortable. May, and it doesn't work quite as well as I thought it would be. Mainly because I cannot put it in a stand that I wanted to unless I have a really high chair. So, please bear with me. <laughs> Color in her pigtail. <laughs> Color in her side, her side lock there, I guess. Okay, so we got that, got down to that. Sorry, please be patient with me for a little while. <laughs> Markers. Note to oneself also hard to close marker top look this is how I'm going to have to close it <laughs> literally have to stand up my marker top and just do it like that it's quite sad okay next I'm just going to take a normal brown marker and draw in the extra layer of shade And if you're wondering what my chibi character is wearing, she is wearing a traditional home book. It's a Korean style dress, especially for a, for a girl. She could probably go on Google Images and type in home book, um, 
and see just the modern versions, but she is wearing more like a traditional homebook. I hope I didn't get any on her face. Okay, there we go. I'm going to have to stand up my marker again and do this. No! Ultimate failure! Hold on. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, then, then for final color, normally I do use three colors at the very least. For hair, Just because I like in the extra depth of shade. And I have to be extremely careful now because I don't want a brown, an awkward brown smudge on her face. It's quite hard. Oh dear. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's better. And then slightly get here on her side lock, coloring the depth of shade there. That worked out well. Coloring right there. Almost looks black. Not so odd. Coloring the bottom part of her pigtails right there. Okay. That's, that'll be the hair part. Oh wait, I missed a spot. There. That's much better. Closing my marker again. Okay. Next, um, I'm going to color in... I'm going to do the skin tone. Take a light skin tone color and just, just carefully color her face. She, her head reminds me of the peach, just the shape of it, and this color really, really makes one think of a peach. Oh no, I colored in her eye. See what I mean, people? It's like, it's so hard to color, color, and then hold a camera, because you need two or both of your hands to balance yourself. But I guess it won't be that bad, if that's the only mistake I made. Okay, so we got skin tone, and I forgot to color in the eyebrow, so I'm going to take my dark colored marker again, my darkest color brown, and then do just that. Color in her cute little eyebrows. Okay. Then we're, I'm going to take a little bit of a darker pink, or a dark, yeah, or a light pink or so, and then Color in with multiple layers her cheeks. Her cute little blushes. Blushes. That sounded odd. <laughs> Some, and sometimes the multi-liners I have, ever when you erase over them for the, to get rid of pencil marks, sometimes it'll fade away, like you'll literally erase it off the paper, so from time to time you're going to have to go back with a multi-liner, and and recolor it, or not recolor, but re-ink. And I'm, I'm afraid that's what I'm going to have to do later on. Now we're going to go for eyes. I'm taking my, pretty much my lightest brown, which probably be my tan. And for large pupils, just color in a dark area. And then if you want to make um, the highlights for your eyes, I guess you can take a little um, little white paint, acrylic white paint or something. Just take a small, tiny art brush, art design brush, or detail brush, and use that. Okay, now um, for her ribbon on her hair, I am going to use a red orange or a scarlet red.
And then for shadow, I may just recolor over the first layer, like add in a second layer or so, to indicate shadowing. It's kind of hard to see. A little bit more darker. And that's better. Then I'm going to take a golden yellow and color in the lines that indicate gold lining. And then color over the first coat. Now, for this part, um, I have no clue what to color the dress. Um, that's basically on pretty much fault on my part since I was supposed to really do that while preparing, but I didn't. Shame, shame on me. But I guess I got some idea. I guess I'm going to make this colorful as possible because Korean home books, if you like I said, on Google Images, they are quite colorful. The colors mostly represent um, earth tone colors. Like you'll see red, yellows, blue. Uh, most of the time, the most common color I see is red and yellow. And But sometimes, but even in today's modern hot box, they add in more colors. And I suppose um, I'll add in a pink since she is a girl I'll add in a cute pink for her coat But I thought that was, this was something really creative to do, you know, instead of just going to your local supermarket or store or whatever and buying stickers to decorate your notebooks or whatever, you can pretty much create your own. I thought that was quite interesting. Okay then, um, now for the stripes, I am going to use a yellow for this first one and basically I want to make sure that whatever color what what kind of color I use for the sleeves I want to make sure that everything is symmetrical looking and who knows I may just add in make a pattern wise a patterned color three yellow stripes this one's got more <laughs> so, so, so much for my symmetry. This one's got three and this one's got four. Oh well. And then I guess I'll use a uh, light purple or a lavender. Again, making sure everything is symmetrical. I'm not going to color in this so that way I can have at least have the sleeves match or whatever. Ah, there we go. Sorry. Um, I don't know what else to use it for. Um, oh, I know. I'll use this very um, dark orchard color. And then color in right beside the purple. And since her ribbon is red, and I like the things to match or co-match with each other, I, I guess I'll color in the skirt red also. And that'll look very nice. That's so cute. That turned out better than I thought. Uh... Okay, and then for, let me see, where's my red? There it is. And dun, 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 for the final part, 
draw coloring the skirt. Now I'm not so sure. I I never use any other expensive markers besides just these Crayola water-based markers, <laughs> kid markers. But um, but basically every time I color, I I don't go like shh, 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 shh. no, I don't do, I don't do that. I make nice round um, strokes. I never lift the marker up off from the paper. And the reason is when you're using cheap it, cheap children marker, especially for Crayola and their water based, or I guess this could apply for any other marker. If you if you make it if you keep applying round strokes and not lifting your marker off the paper, the color will actually the coloring the coat of the color will actually turn out very even and you won't have any strokes or streaks. And that was something I accidentally did find out. And another trick that I that I use, but sometimes most of the time I don't use because it's um, because it's time consuming. Is that first I want to apply um, a light first coat of color pencil of the same color, and then take a marker and go over it. But most, but like I said, that is really time consuming. And there she is. There is my cute little Korean chibi. I don't want, don't know what to name her, but she is going to go very well. And at the end of the video, you'll see the finished product. And there she is. Your, our own little homemade sticker. <laughs> um. Yeah, but basically what I did is I after I went back in, added a shade to this, the clothes in, and then took a took the sharpie and drew lines around here so that way she can have like a little white barrier when she goes on my hold on. That's just when she goes on my black sketchbook, so it'll look cute and nice. Um and one thing that you can use, you can use some acrylic white paint and a very tiny detail brush. And basically, if you have any strange marks or made some accidents or whatever, you can just pretty much hide those by painting over them. And with that, I did the same thing. I had some little black marks where the scissors didn't get to it when I was cutting on the line. And then I had, I fixed her eye right there and add some high, little highlights so I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you want to know how to draw chibis um, please tell me or make a request and I'll do so I may do it anyway but depending on how much time I have so I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching